Hey everyone, Jangro here. What are we doing here? These words in front of my face. We're going to look at performance. And if you're playing Minecraft 1.21 and maybe you're not on the highest end gaming PC, or even if you are and you want to get the most out of your game, you're in the right place. Here I'm running NeoForge 1.21 with no mods at all. My FPS seems good. I have a pretty good PC, but this is a brand new world. And as we start to load up mods and add shaders and build resource farms, mobs farms, fight friends in, things will get bad fast. We can stem the performance tide with some performance mods. And today I'm sharing 10 mod solutions to boost your game's performance. This list is for the brand new NeoForge platform, but these mostly apply to Fabric as well. And here's one bonus tip. That's a great way to improve performance. Did you know that even in single player, Minecraft still has to serve up the world and that's happening on your desktop. You can improve your performance by using a hosted Minecraft server. When you use a service like Apex Hosting, your computer is freed from handling server tasks, which means better performance even when you're playing solo because Minecraft is always running a server in the background. Plus with Apex, you can play with friends without managing port forwarding. You get 24 seven support to keep things running smoothly. So if you wanna support the channel, check them out using my link, jangler.com slash Apex. Your support means a lot and it helps me keep bringing you more content. All right, let's take a look at some performance mods. I'm going to do this in Prism because Prism makes it really easy to do stuff like this. You can do this in CurseForge, AT Launcher, any launcher you want. I've already got this instance set up, but it's as simple as clicking Add Instance, NeoForge, current versions, give it a name and click OK. And you'll have a new instance to work with. Then you click on it and hit Edit, and you've got all of the options in it. Click the Mods tab, Download Mods, and now here we can search for the mods that we want to add. First one we're going to install is two of them that just really aren't that exciting. You'll find them in just about every mod pack. They're worth installing for sure. First one is Modern Fix right here. And this pretty much, let's spread this out a little bit here. It just fixes a lot of bugs, speeds up Minecraft a lot. Speeds up load times, I believe. It's not going to be make noticeable improvements to things like FPS. You can read through this, it optimizes a lot of things. So we're gonna select this one for download. The other one we're going to do is Ferrite Core, and this optimizes memory. Modern Fix will actually warn you that you need Ferrite Core, so we're going to install both of those together. Okay, there we go. And it's not even really worth loading and looking at the game with these because they're invisible. They just make things work better. Actually, we will load the game. Take a look at our baseline FPS and, and see where we're at. And I didn't even do a cut there. That's how fast Minecraft loaded with just those two mods on there. Modern Fix definitely made a difference there. All right, here we are in our game again. Things need to settle down before our FPS will go back up to where it should be. All right, and things are settling down into the low hundreds. If we kind of move around simulating playing, see it drops down pretty low. Let's take a quick look at our video settings. We've actually got graphics. Oh, let's make them fabulous. Let's see what else. Clouds, fancy. Vsync is off, which is a good thing to try if you're looking to improve your frames, especially like tearing on the screen. It tries to sync with the monitor's frame rates and doesn't work well in all cases. It does not work well in mine. Okay, so here's where we're at. Yeah, we're kind of hovering around 100 and it's dipping down to 60 or so when I move around. I do have my render distance set to 32 just to give us a little extra stress on the system so we can watch things hopefully improve. Okay, let's add some more. So back here in Prism to the mods, download mods. Sodium is kind of a workhorse of video performance. So we're going to select that one to install. We're also going to take a look at Embedium, which is a... A fork of sodium. So you can't use them together. Embedium generally does things, uh, does some extra things that sodium does not. In general, I see people using Embedium more than sodium when they can. There's a catch here though. Currently on 1.21, Iris is not compatible with Embedium. So if you want to run shaders, you're not going to be able to use Embedium. Let's just install Iris as well while we're here. Now we can't run sodium and Embedium at the same time. So we need to pick one of them. I'm just going to look at sodium. Embedium and sodium from a interface standpoint are generally the same. Again, you can take a, you can use Embedium, especially if you're not using Iris. By the time you're watching this video, Iris may have Embedium support. My understanding is that they're working on it. It should be very soon, but we're gonna start with sodium. Let's launch the game, see what this does. Okay, here I am back in the game again, and I've literally touched nothing. I just let it load and settle down. And look at our FPS, we're in the, in the 500s. I move around, it dips down into the 200s. So if you do nothing else, you can stop here. Just install Sodium or Embedium and you're gonna watch your FPS skyrocket. Pretty amazing. Let's take a look at what it does though. If we go into the video settings, now we can see that the menu has changed. So we have better controls over these things. 
Got some quality tabs where you can tweak some more things like leaves and weather, some performance specific stuff, fog occlusion. And I don't have any specific recommendations. It really just, if you're having trouble with FPS. I like to just tweak things. But I think I've got things pretty much maxed out here. I guess we can put weather on fancy and leaves on fancy. Click apply, go back out. And we're still getting really great FPS. All right, I was curious. I loaded Embedium. This is Embedium instead of Sodium. You can see over there on the right, it says Embedium Renderer. It's roughly the same. I don't know. Might be a little tiny bit better, but not super noticeable just looking at the numbers. All right, let's try out shaders. Right, back in Prism, we're going to turn off Embedium and turn on Sodium and turn on Iris. Now there's a shaders pack screen. It says I have four installed. I think there's a bug in Prism they don't show, but I've got them, I've got four pack, four shader packs installed. Basically these top ones here. We'll see when we get into the game. Okay, let's launch the game again. Okay, here we are back in the game. Let's go into the video options, video settings, and turn on shader packs. So I have two things in here. I'm not sure why it said four. Let's enable shaders, and we'll start with, let's start with BSL. We click on sh shader pack settings. We can see here that it has different options, and we can very easily just tweak the profiles. You can see down below what the different profiles do. And you can tweak all these things manually. Let's just leave it on high. Let's see what that does. So we're getting in the hundreds, which is pretty good. I'm okay with that. Let's take a look at complementary. So the shader pack settings for complementary. Actually, it's reimagined that's on right now. Even though it's unbound, it has both visual styles um, and the profiles are different. You can set it all the way down to potato, see what that does. But you can see things aren't great in the distance, but getting up upwards of 200 plus FPS. Let's set things to Ultra it does look nice. So about 100 FPS for me. So you can tweak those things. You can tweak all the individual settings. Use those presets. It's generally what I do. But just balance how things look and how things perform for you and your PC. OK, let's take a look at some of the other mods we can add to tweak things even further. Now we're back in Prism. Let's click the Downloads button. And something that's been staring us in the face is this Immediately Fast mod, which clearly must be what we need. It optimizes immediate mode rendering. So it's got buffers, makes a lot of improvements to different types of graphics rendering, claims that FPS is improved. FPS should be around two times higher on busy servers. All right, we're definitely going to give this a go. Let's check it out. All right, things are settling down. I didn't change anything. So if you remember before, when I was moving around, I was getting down below 60. We're pretty stable here, above 100. And this is on Ultra, the Ultra profile for complementary. This is definitely an improvement. I don't know if I move around and cause this very large render distance to get worked, it drops, but generally pretty stable. This one's a keeper. And back in Prism again, let's look again in the mods. Now there are a whole bunch of sodium add-ons. So Sodium Extra, which gives you much more detailed controls over the different settings. So we'll add this one. Uh, Sodium Extras does some even more stuff and adds an FPS counter to the screen. Should have added that earlier. Wouldn't have had to look at that big, ugly F3 screen. And then there's some very specific things that we can add, like shadowy path blocks, leaf culling, Sodium Dynamic Lights. So let's add all of these. We're also going to add this Reese's Sodium Options which changes the menu around. We'll look at it without it first to see what it does and we'll see why we want it. So let's turn that one off, the sodium options, and we'll just add all these at once and see what happens. Okay, now we can see in the upper left, we have an FPS indicator. So we can just, so you don't have to look at that F3 screen. Taking a look in the menus, options, video settings, you can see we've got a mess of stuff. We've got all kinds of new options here. Now you can see the menu is kind of messy here. Let's go back out and turn Reese's main, um, options back on and we'll see things look a little bit better. Okay, turn that back on, start the game. We are back in again. If we look at the video settings, now we have a nice clean menu to work with here. And again, our FPS isn't going to just be immediately improved by adding these things, but we have all kinds of options here. You can start in here with this performance stuff. A lot of these things are turned on. Turning off particles generally does, makes some big improvements. I just suggest that you go in and take a look and tweak things and watch what it does to your own FPS. But honestly, one of the major things you can do is turn down this render distance because 
32 is kind of is really nice, but it's kind of crazy. And let's just see how high we can get our FPS with all these things. So let's turn off shaders and set the render distance back down to a normal amount. Set things down to fast. Oh, that did not stick. Set the render distance down. We can get FPS upwards of 1700 on my computer. So we can do all kinds of tweaking to get FPS up really high if that's what's your priority. My priority is how things look. So I'll happily play at 100 FPS. It's all up to you. All right, we'll leave it at that. Hope this was a useful look at how to optimize your performance on Minecraft 1.21 with NeoForge. This mostly applies to Fabric as well. Hope this was useful. Let me know your favorite performance tweaks in the comments. And until next time, thanks for watching. I appreciate you.